binding and analyzing information in headers and looking at other data that web applications send to us during normal interactions with them is a boring and time-consuming task that has to be done during bug bounty hunting and penetration testing. But there are tools that solve this problem, ranging from security scanners to writing your own application or even by using common Linux tools such as curl. In my personal opinion, HTTPX is one of the better tools that is specifically designed for this purpose. HTTPX is able to parse information easily and quickly that allows bug bounty hunters to find changes in web pages, utilizing HTTPX's hashing, parsing and comparison features. In this video we will teach you how to use HTTPX. We will teach you basic use, different types of results that HTTPX can show, filtering these results and saving the output. We also take a limited look at some advanced usage of HTTPX. HTTPX is developed and maintained by Project Discovery, an open source software company that builds software that is able to quickly discover and monitor for possible vulnerabilities. One of the more well-known tools made by them is Nuclei, the template-based vulnerability scanner. Like we mentioned in the intro, with HTTPX we can quickly parse responses from web servers. The first thing we need to do to parse a website is to set the host that we want to parse. To set the host name for HTTPX we have several options. The first option and the easiest way to set the host is to use the standard in. To do this we can simply echo the host name that we want to use and then pipe it into HTTPX. This will start HTTPX using the host name we selected as a target. If we want to test multiple hosts at once we can use an input file. This requires the L flag followed by a file name. Each of the hosts in the file needs to be on a new line. HTTPX supports host names, IP addresses or SID arrangers. It supports these both in the standard in and file input methods. The final and more advanced way is to make a complete request from scratch or have a request pre-generated by other tools in the tool chain. We can enter a raw request using the RR flag. A raw HTTP request is the same as we can send to a web server using Netcat. It allows us to change the requests and headers that we want to submit but might require more in-depth knowledge of the HTTP protocol. If we start HTTPX with a host applied, we can see if the host is running an HTTP or HTTPS service. If the host is running a web server on port 80 or 443, HTTPX will return a positive result. If we want to get further information, we can use one of the many probes that HTTPX has. Probes, as HTTPX calls them, get basic information that the web server sends to the client with any standard request, such as header information, favicons, or information in the web page itself. HTTPX parses its data into a more readable format. The first probe we'll discuss is the SE flag or status code flag. This probe is for status codes. Status codes are the numbers such as 404, 302, etc. These indicate what kind of response the server gives to us. The follow redirects flag allows HTTPX to follow redirects to other pages. When HTTPX finds a redirect, it will send the probes we configured to the target of the redirect. Without this flag, a redirection would not be followed and it could give incorrect probe results. Tag Detect or TD flag looks for technology fingerprints that are used in the web application. For example, it might return Nginx, Apache or other version information from more obscure services such as cloud providers. HTTPX gets this information from headers that are sent by the server. The title flag will get the title of the web page. This can be handy since it could show default pages which could indicate an unconfigured server or could be used to identify sites which are similar or the same. When we use a combination of these flags, we can get a pretty detailed result of the host that runs a web server. This gives us version information, status code, web page title, and if redirected, it will show the site we've been redirected to. But if we want to get more detailed information, there are more probes that we can use. We can use a path flag to check if a path exists. This can be done with well-known files such as robot.txt and we can use it to put in parameters that we might want to send to the server in a GET request. We can even use this to try to perform basic XSS or SQL injection. This is done by instead of using a path, we use an injection attack. While this is possible, we recommend using tooling specifically designed to perform this function such as Nuclei or SQL Map. We can use a location flag to see the location of a redirect. HTTPX shows then the output of both original URL and the URL that it redirects to. This flag also enables the follow redirects flag. The favicon flag calculates out an MM3 hash of the favicon. This is a numeric hash. It's possible that during bug bounty hunting, the 
same favicon is used across many signs within your scope. This would give a bug bounty hunter the chance to find signs that are not yet known based on the favicon hash. The hash flag creates a hash from the web page. This hash can be used for comparing websites to each other. When the content of the website changes, the hash will also change. This means that dynamically generated web pages could return a different hash each time the hash is calculated. With the IP flag, we can get the IP of a web server. This could indicate if there's multiple web applications running on the same web server or behind the same load balancer. Be aware that CDNs often have the same IP and should be excluded from the collected data. The CDN flag shows if there's a CDN or WAF present. If it is present, HTTPX displays the CDN that it has found and follows the redirect to the web page. This means that other probes will be performed on the selected host and not on the CDN or WAF. HTTPX also comes built in with a number of comparators. This makes it easier to compare items and we don't have to use complicated bash one-liners to trim the output to only show the items that we want. The MC flag matches the HTTP status code with the code that we supply. If we want to supply multiple status codes, we can separate them out using commas. The ML flag followed by a string matches the content length that we supply in the string. The MLC flag followed by an integer matches the line count of the page. The MWC flag matches the word count of the page. The MS flag followed by a string is used to find strings of tags on the web page. We can use this to match keywords that we are interested in. Words like error, login or password reset could indicate login forms or error pages. We will leave it up to the viewer to find more of these words. If you know any of these interesting keywords, please leave a comment. We can also use regular expressions to extract the text from a web page. With the ER flag followed by a regular expression, we can extract the expression from the web page. By using content filters, we can filter out the traffic that we specify. Unlike the previous section where the flags we discussed only show the matching results, content filters do the opposite. They remove the results we specified. The FC flag can be used to filter status codes. We can enter multiple status codes separated by commas. The FL flag filters out the content length. FWC flag filters out the selected word count. The FLC flag followed by a string filters by line count. The FS flag allows us to filter out specific tags from the results. With the FFC flag, we can filter out favicons based on the MMH3 hash that we make with HTTPX. When we get a large scope during an engagement, defenses could be triggered due to the speed of the request and because we're making the request to many different hosts within the scope in quick succession. HTTPX offers ways to limit the requests that are sent per second to host. The first of these options is the T flag. This flag limits the amount of threads that we are allowed to run at the same time. The default rate is 50 per second and the maximum rate is 150 per second. The RL flag allows us to limit the request per second. This ensures that probes do not get sent off faster than the rate specified. The RLM flag limits how many requests HTTPX is allowed to make per minute. The timeout flag is used to signal how long each of the requests is allowed to take before timing out. The value that you need to supply is in seconds. The final rate limit option is a retries flag. This flag sets the number of retries before HTTPX marks the target is unable to connect. HTTPX offers several ways to save the output. We can use the SC flag to save the output as a text file. With the CSV flag, we can save the output as a CSV file. With the JSON flag, we can create a JSON file. If we want to use more than one probe, the JSON file can store many different probes, while the other output formats are more limited in which probes can be stored. The SRD flag stores the responses in a custom name directory. Inside the folder, it creates a file with the name url.txt. If you know any other tools you want us to discuss, please leave a comment. If you learned anything in this video, please click like, subscribe and the bell icon. It will really help us in the algorithm and thank you for watching.